the edge carry is the only thing that's left. It's like you kick the can down the road and all of a sudden there's no more road. And we're and the central bankers are kicking like hell. That can is starting to bounce off of infinity. And we we are on the edge. We are on the edge of the abyss. I don't I, I believe that we we are at the point that we've been talking about for 14 years. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, one of my earliest guests who's been with us almost since the beginning. Hard to believe, Daryl. It's 14 years now we've been doing this. And uh, we keep getting closer and closer to the abyss. But we haven't quite gone over the edge yet. But just maybe, but uh, we're getting so close now that we can't help but go over the edge. The edge, carry is the only thing that's left. It's like you kick the can down the road, and all of a sudden, there's no more road. And we're and the central bankers are kicking like hell. That can is starting to bounce off of infinity, and we we are on the edge. We are on the edge of the abyss. I don't. I I believe that we we are at the point that we've been talking about for 14 years. When we started talking, I believe that we were going to collapse then, all right? Mm -hmm. And we didn't. We didn't because of one thing. The central bankers had a, pulled a trick out of the hat they had never done before. It was called quantitative easing. Mm -hmm. Before, central bankers had always manipulated the credit and debt balance in society, growth, you know, contraction, blah, 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 with, with the interest rate, all right? Things got a little tight, you lose interest rate, things slow down, you let the interest rate go down to speed up growth because there's more credit in the system, blah, 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 blah. blah. So it, it became a, a, you know, that's how they, that's what it was. It was a card trick. And they had, they had, act, they were the ones who issued the cards. What happened is in 2008, it was so bad that lowering the interest rates down to zero didn't work. They were, the, the collapse happened, Kerry, in, in uh, 2008 in September, okay? In December, they went down to zero, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, a year and a half before, they'd been at five and a half percent. All right? Now, they're at zero, and nothing happened. Okay? And that's why on January 1st, in the, in the Genesis blockchain of Bitcoin, when it first was issued, there was a statement that Alistair Darling Essentially, the Bank of England was going to do going to the till, and, and it was a program called quantitative easing. And this is the first time central bankers were forced to do that. They before to make it go up and down, all they do is adjust the balance, but the the uh, credit, the the the, the, uh, the interest right. rate. It's yeah. like jiggling the handle on your toilet. Your toilet, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's all going to blink, you know, <laughs> you know, Terry, it's running again. <laughs> And you're like, man, I'm not going <laughs> to hire that plumber. He came in here. I paid him 450 bucks, and the damn thing was running the next week. So you go up there and jiggle it. All right? Yeah. And it stops. It stops until it doesn't. Until something is so bad in the system below that you actually have to call in the plumber. All right? Well, jiggling the, the handle is what it, the interest rate thing was. In 2008, it was so bad. It had never happened. It, was, it happened for us in the Great Depression. That's why we were convinced when you and I started talking, we were headed for the Great Depression, and we still are, all right? But we didn't mm -hmm. expect the QE to come in. QE trillions of dollars on the books of central banks. They had never had a negative balance on their books, all right? On the books of central banks and flooded markets with money. Now, what, what did that do in 2008? The money, because of the way it's issued in a credit and what we call capitalism, it goes first, it goes only to the people who are worthy of the credit. To the banks. Not to you and me. To yeah. the banks. So the banks got basically zero percent interest on their money. All right. Now, the hope was they that money would go out and vivify, restore the economy, we start buying and selling. Well, to do that, we all needed cheap credit. But the banks, because they had taken such massive hits. To the balance sheets, they weren't going to let that credit go for cheap. They arbitraged it. All right. They were in a crisis. They knew their customers 
were in a less financial stable position now than they were before the crash. And when you're in that position, they're not going to cut you any slack. You're, you're now more risk. Before, they looked at you as the cash cow. Now, you may be the cash cow, but you're wheezy. Okay? I mean, you don't look so good today. All right? Your interest rate starts going up. Yeah. So that's what they did. And ever since then, they, they kept trying to raise the interest rates, and the cow kept falling down. They were never able to normalize the interest rates. All right? And what happened is they really tried to start it in 2016 because they knew cheap interest rates is like steroids. It works for a while. We all know somebody who was in the hospital who had problems with this or that, and they got to hit his steroids. But we all know that yeah. they know that continuing to sell steroids is a killer. So what they the central banks have done since 2008 is continually tried to raise the interest rates back up. All right, but every time they did, the cow started stumbling. All mm -hmm. right, and got and laid down again. Well, an intervening event happened, and in 2020. COVID hit. All right. Now, mm -hmm. credit and debt based economies are, 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 it's like a carburetor in a car. You adjust the, the ratio between the air and the, and the gasoline. Okay. And to juice it up, you either put more air, I don't know, but that's, that's what it is. They, they, they put a supercharger on it. Okay. But you always need to have a flow going in or the engine's going to stop. And it's going to die. Well, what happened is, is that in 2020, the engine contracted. It didn't slow down. The cars didn't start slowing down. You know, when the economy starts slowing down and we watch it, like the PMI, the contraction, oh, it's slowing down, it's like growth is slowing, and we get worried. Well, it never, ever really contracts except in like a depression. In April of 2020, when COVID first hit and everybody figured out, hey, you, maybe you ought to stay home today. All right. Yeah. Economies all around the world contracted by an average of 45 percent. That's a unheard of. That's unheard of. Unheard of. So what they did and they knew where we're headed. So what they did was they poured so much money in. They did QE on a level. Everybody got money in QE. Yeah. I mean, Helicopter. everyone and bankers don't give money to anybody. If a banker offers you money, Carrie. You should put yourself in the position of a little girl and a stranger coming at you candy. All right? That banker does not want you to enjoy that thing for the reason, for the candy bar. It wants you to take it because he's got plans. All right? right. So they poured all this money in. And what because in a capitalist economy, in a banker's economy, money is issued in the form of credit. Credit hit the markets in massive amounts and credit immediately turns into debt and IOU after it's spent. Once that credit is triggered, it becomes debt. So what we focused on after 2020 was the massive amount of credit injected into the system. I think somebody said 70% of US dollars printed since 1776 were issued in 2020, 21. 70%, huge, all right? Now, this is what, three, four years later, that credit has now turned into debt. It's, it's become debt, all right? And we're running on gas and fumes as we speak. Now, last on last Friday, Carrie, one of the headlines was the markets reached another high today, okay? And it said in the last, I think, two months or quarter, there were 22 record days. Rec 22 record, higher, higher, higher. That never had happened before, all right? And I wrote in my little note, because I, you know, I, I've got this web, my website, DR Shoe, okay? And I post articles that I think are pertinent. And I, and I used to put my little comments in. I know, it's just the news. I put a comment in on that article for the first time in like two years. And my comment was, it's brightest before the crash. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're used to it's darkest before the dawn to give us hope. Right. But the flip side is, and just as true is, it's, it's brightest before the crash. Well, the next Monday, it started falling. And the last two days, as of yesterday, the Dow has fallen over 700 points in two days. Mm -hmm. Okay? We were reaching that point. And this is because the tsunami of credit 
has turned into a tidal wave of debt. And, and, and you know, I, I, Carrie, I was thinking about what I was going to say today. And and I know that people think, oh, this can happen. Or what we call her black swans, you know, like in a, an endogenous event where the system itself internally breaks down, like, you know, the repo markets or something like that, or an exogenous event, like a war, okay, can cause the event. What I mm -hmm. think, the critical piece is neither endogenous nor exogenous. The critical piece that's going to cause it to fall is a collapse of confidence. Yeah. It's a confidence game. And as long as you're confident, you're yeah. going to borrow money to buy the house, you're going to buy the car, and they mm -hmm. need you to borrow money to buy the house, to buy the car, to go to school, to pay up, you know, to blah, blah, blah. And as soon as you become free, you're going to pull in your, you know, your, your, you know, your, hey, that vacation doesn't look so good, blah, blah, blah. And once it starts slowing down at the macro level, everything slows down. This is why China yeah. is in such trouble. China is fascinating because they're like the little kid that grew up real fast. Okay? Real fast. I mean, yeah. fuck, 40 years ago, they were they had bicycles 50 years ago. Yeah. Now they got Porsches. Okay? They, were, they got they Porsches. Were a joke. They were, they were a, a joke. joke. Now they're like us on credit. <laughs> but they did they it happened so fast because you know, you know, the West capitalism happened for like what 200 years. In China, it happened in 40. All right. And they mm -hmm. you talk about bubbles. The Chinese love real estate. So everything went into real estate. And once the bubble popped, the real estate bubble popped in 2020. All of a sudden, the Chinese economy started contracting because now they don't trust anything. And no, no and they shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm wrong. You should trust things when they're expanding and distrust them when they're contracting. Yeah. All right. Yep, and the trick is, is and the trick is in between. We are we've been in that in between area since Purgatory. you and I started talking 15 years ago. Purgatory, Daryl. Purgatory. Yeah. And I, we're headed yeah. towards hell. You know, I know a whole bunch of people at the top who who didn't have them cashed out of the market yet. The, what they're looking at. Oh, man, this is closer to heaven than I've ever been. Which yeah. is true. Which is true. But they don't understand they're closer to hell than they've ever been to. Yeah. And the chances of them reaching heaven are zero compared to the chances of them hitting hell. Right. Today. That's where we are. Yeah, well, you know, that greed. What did, uh, what's his name, Bernard Baruch say? I got rich letting the other guy make the last 10%. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's what it is. You, you don't know when it turns. And, every, you know, I think Jan Husband said, the, the everybody is 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 a because of, because the spikes have been so huge, and 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 the and the naysayers have been proved wrong so many times, that if you have a tendency and if you want that last dollar on the table, you're it's it's your it, you're you're front loaded to stay in the game. You're front loaded, and and this is just how it is. You know, my father lost a huge amount of money. In the stock market, you know, he was just he was a, you know engineer and a huge amount of money it was not a huge amount of money, but for him, it was a huge amount of money because yeah. when, when mutual funds got in, and my father's very cautious, but th there was so much money in mutual funds, everybody he finally got in there, like a whole lot of people did in the sixties. He finally got in there, and then the rug got pulled out. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what happened in nineteen seventy three. 19, no, 1983, after the rug got pulled out, the Dow was at 777. Yeah. And what's it now? 35,000. I, I have no idea what it's at. It's, you know, I don't watch the damn thing, but it was at 777. We, this is the biggest, and that's when, you know, you know, that's, 39, that, that's 000, the run. 39,183 at this, at, right at this moment, Daryl. Wow. It's 13 See? points today. Yeah, from seven seven seven, and what they what they've done, Gary, they, because so much depends on it. They 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 pushed aside gold because they knew gold. In the nineteen eighties, gold went from thirty five dollars an ounce to what six hundred and fifty in in nine years. That's huge, in nine years. Okay, huge, and they knew that, it, and they saw it was like a, it was like they were watching a crystal ball, and they thought, "Holy smokes, we're back again." People now know people know gold 
is a like a barometer of systemic yeah. distress. And they knew gold, the price of gold, if it went up, people would get worried. The it was as, 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 as they got the price of gold. Down. So what they did is they started beating it down. And now when 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 you know in 2008 when the collapse happened, when the first financial collapse happened, right. gold started skyrocketing. The big boys got the bank of, 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 of they got Switzerland to sell 22 tons of gold directly into the market in the spring of 2009. Directly. And it shoved mm -hmm. gold down. So now in 2024, nobody except the old true believers in gold still believe that gold is going to be the last man standing. Right. And it is. It, I mean, I believe it. You believe it. Yeah, but everybody yeah. else out there, the boys about, in the game. Okay, so what about Bitcoin? My feeling is like the embracing of Bitcoin by all the institutions is just to throw. Oh, this is death now. Throw more it's money death. away from gold it's, into cryptos, right? Hey, this is what what that is. They're the equivalent of my father in the 1960s. Yeah. Institutions, I call institutional money the slow boys. Mm. Okay. Wall Street is a dance between the fast boys and the slow boys. Now, who wins the dance? The people who call the dance in the first place, the fast boys. All right. The fast boys need the slow boys at the dance. Yeah. All right. So they do everything to get them in. Now, what do they sell the slow boys? Debt. They sell them the exhaust off of their fumes. IOUs. All right. So the slow boys have government IOUs. All right. Uh, every, every, you know, corporate IOUs. Then in 2008, they got bundled IOUs of, of subprime loans. They even got that shoved down their throat because the other ones weren't turning anything. But that's who it is. The slow boys are now sitting there. They've lost so much money up and down. They're they're going to Bitcoin. They're th you know, the fast boys, now that fast boys have an ETF, they can sell the goddamn shit to the poor slow boys. Mm -hmm. And the slow boys go, yeah, look, it went up, it went up and up, because they're really conservative. And all they got to do is say, hey, Bill, this stuff was worth less than a penny 2009, and now look what it's worth. Don't, don't, don't think that it's lost 20 grand yesterday. Think that it's, it's gone up 80 grand since it started. <laughs> and Bill goes, yeah, you're right, as they hand him another bottle of champagne and pitch him, you know, another pension fund. And that's what's happening. They're in it. They're in it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's quite a pickle we're in, huh? Well, I just thought, here we are, Gary, talking the week after Easter. <laughs> yeah. You know, what a great time to – And it's, but it's true. You and I have been talking about this since 2000. I mean, for, for 14 years, we watched it happen. And, 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 and the question has always been underneath it, how long is this going to go on? When's it going to crash? Because like I told you before, once you see that the, the, there's a structural uh, uh, structural flaw, and, you're, and you're, you and I are like monetary engineers. Mm -hmm. All right, we, we study money. All right? The other people study what money builds. All right? We study money and once yeah. you see a structural flaw you go holy smokes what you're building is going to crack yeah all right so we've been fixated on the effect of the flaw everybody else is going man this stuff look what you're going to do with it <laughs> and we watch them go wow look what it's going to do to you and they don't listen to us it's the you tofu. know and we know why it's the tofu drag economy right oh man this is what it is so you know, I I I, I don't I don't know. you know I I I told my friend Marshall is uh, you know he likes to be he likes to be optimistic. I said he, he thought this was really funny. I said someday Marshall, we're gonna owe Chicken Little an apology. Yeah, and, you know, Chicken uh -huh. Little's gonna be right someday. <laughs> the sky you will know? fall eventually. Huh? The skull will fall eventually. The uh -huh. end of the road is gonna come. You can kick the can all you want. But the end of the road is going to come. Hey. You know, one of my sayings I wrote a long time ago was, "You, we borrowed from tomorrow, and guess what? Tomorrow's it's, here. It's, tomorrow's here.
Yeah, well, you remember that song? It was a theme song from a movie in the 60s, Let's Forget About Tomorrow, Tomorrow Never Comes. <laughs> yeah, Let's Forget About funny. Del Monte. It was an Italian. I think Gina Lola Brigida was in Gina. the movie. And oh, we ought to bring that one back and put yeah. that uh, and and do 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 a fake uh, a fake ad for Goldman Sachs. Let's or let's J.P. Morgan about tomorrow. Let's forget about <laughs> tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Frank Sinatra sang it too. Oh, of course, it's yeah. yeah. It's 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 the it's the hope of the desperate. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that movie. Um, I think Gina Lola Brigida was in it, but oh, but you can't forget Gina Lola Brigida. Yeah, definitely. Hey, uh, so uh, uh, AI. How does AI fit into all of this, Daryl? And what's your take on it? Um, you know, uh, AI you thought about it. Okay, AI is is the last bubble. One of the is it is a bubble. Okay, and it doesn't. It's not that it doesn't have value but it doesn't have the value that they think it has, mm -hmm. okay? They they think that AI is going to give them answers that they don't have, and it's true. It is going to give answers that they don't have, but it's not gonna give them the answers that they want to have. We don't know if it's lying or not, right? You know, yeah, even that, because all it is is based on our collective, on, on our collective thoughts, it's nothing new. They take as much data from the internet as they can, much chatter, and you and I know some of that chatter is true, and ninety nine percent of it's bullshit. How much chatter out there is 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 devoted to what we're talking about? Less than one tenth of one percent, minuscule. All the money chatter. If you're going to go do money chatter, it's it's about blah blah blah. And so if you ask AI a question about money, it's going to give you the common, a more fuller right. in-depth answer to the common bullshit that's going around yeah. and that's that's ai and these are desperate times people are looking for answers and ai is the last of the desperate answers in the desperate times <laughs> hey well maybe we're better off using an eight ball you know well, you are in a sense. I mean, what was it? Those stock market things. The joke was hitting it with a, and they they had the stock market the prognosticators, and then you had the dartboard. You know, <laughs> it's a crapshoot, Gary. Uh -huh. It always has been. That's why. That's why. That's why alcohol has always been popular. Yeah. <laughs> you hey, know? By the way, that song "Let's Forget About Tomorrow" was from the uh, movie "The Yellow Rolls Royce." which uh, was from the 60s. And I actually saw that movie in uh, Radio City with my mother, uh, <laughs> God knows how many years ago. It was a 1964 knows. film, but yeah. I think I was there like 67, I saw it. But yeah, uh, yeah. You remember that title, boy, for a reason. Yep. <laughs> All right. so, so AI though, but it is uh, pushing the limits. All right. It's like this godlike creation where it's being portrayed as, but it's yes. really pushing the limits, right? Yes, it is. It is. It's it's it is extraordinary. You know, my my son, in fact, <coughs> Benjamin, he graduated from MIT in 1994, and at that time he was thinking of getting it into AI. I mean, Marvin Minsky was at MIT. Marvin was Minsky was the known as the father right. of artificial intelligence. All right, mm -hmm. and 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 he was thinking of getting to artificial intelligence. And what I I was opposed to AI even then, all right, and mm -hmm. for for philosophical reasons, all right, because all it was to me and it is is a bunch of thought forms of our humanity, you know, jumbled together, and you roll the dice and you ask the the compendium of of of, of all this past bullshit, speculate what the answer. <laughs> It's just not. It's, it's like we're looking into a mirror, a more mm -hmm. sophisticated mirror, a bigger mirror than we've ever looked into before. But it's the same yeah. mirror, and it's not. It was narcissist, narcissist, whoever's name was the guy. Narcissus. We ain't no different. Yeah. yeah, we've just you know we've got a new mirror. We've got AI is the latest mirror with a very high tech fancy frame around, it. and we're still looking at our our fucking reflections, thinking mm -hmm. it's going to give us something. That we that, that that we're looking for, you know. And, did you see that demo of the uh, 
AI robot like picking up an apple and hand, guy says, I'm hungry, give me some food. And the thing looks around, picks up an apple and hands it to him. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll find that. I'll put it in the show notes. It's amazing. Okay. It's, you know, it says, hey, put these things, uh, you know, put these things away. And it puts all this stuff in in the tray in a, a drying rack. You know, it's, yeah. it's spectacular. Yeah, no, it, 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 you know what it does? It mimics us. You know, we're fascinated that we can get machines to sort of act like us. I mean, that's fascinating. But Carrie, look at who we are. Mm -hmm. Look at what we've done to the planet. I mean, and that's the scary part. If yeah. you've got machines like us, except who aren't even alive, and we've destroyed the planet already, yeah, what are they going to? What are it. they going to do? <laughs> you know, it's going to make it worse, huh? It's going to make it worse. Over. Yeah. Take over. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody was fixated on Frankenstein. I think we should have gotten a, a, a psychological readout of the professor who made him up. We should yeah. do a story of his. We should, you know, let's do his bio. What caused him to do that? Uh, all right, Daryl. It's been great speaking with you. <laughs> Dr. Shun. S C H O O N. Oh, oh, That's where you find Daryl's postings. And uh, hey, make sure you sign up at our site, Financial Survival Network, free newsletter going out shortly. Daryl, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Keep on keeping on. <laughs>